people like that come up with. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because it was some stupid questions. Nothing of that I thought was merit. Right. You know what I mean? So I, I don't understand it. I don't. One of the one of the final questions was what what would you want? Yeah, your presidency. No, if you so happen to become president, what, what would you want your presidential legacy? Yeah, I don't know what the hell. Meaning, how would you want the country to look like right. your presidency after that? I mean, I'm, I'm listening to uh, some of the uh, and say. some of the individuals speak, and they're talking about mm -hmm. they went so far away from the question that was asked that mm -hmm. it, it, it to me. The answers didn't make any sense. Right. Now, they right. may have made sense if it was done to a different question. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the uh, I guess. Well, believe it or not, most of the music the, I got from uh, Excuse me, I'm sorry. The, I didn't bring the monitor, music. the one who's asking the questions, he asked a specific question. What did you want your legacy to be? All of them. Right. And I mean, every last one of them. None of them answered the question. Wow. Right. They all answered a quest. They all answered with an answer that had absolutely nothing to do with the question. Right. I will make sure that ISIS <laughs> is killed. Do me a favor. Post on social media that we have a little problem. We have a couple minutes. Keep going up. They don't think we just playing a bunch of music. Reset that whole thing. Thanks. Make up the time the dark time you do that you recording uh Chris? This is what we go through. We have technical difficulties. <laughs> this happens. This is the worst of life. Y'all think this easy. <laughs> it's not it's not easy at all. Just like one wants oatmeal in the morning, the other one wants Captain Crunch. Technical <laughs> difficulties. That's when you make pancakes. Seven eleven hasn't opened up yet. <laughs> Well, they always open, aren't they? Excuse me, the market hasn't opened up yet. <laughs> All right, now I've got to start the new screen thing. So click on Sam Broadcast. Yeah, man, and this is going to be attacking each other, how each other look. It's going to take a while to come up. I thought it was real childish. It, it was a thing of... Sam It was a thing of... Not being in tune so they got with the topic at hand. Right, I'm just doing what you want to do. Right. And they all exhibited to me, with, with just that last question, they all exhibited to me a big disconnect with the general public. Right, and that's what I'm saying. From that, do you want these people running the country when they had such a disconnect and they couldn't even answer simple questions? I think they answered them the best way that they know how because that's their way of dealing with everything. You see, I, you see, I look at, at, at politicians at that level is they don't have a connection with grassroots people. They don't. Okay. They're simply driven by polls and uh, uh, lobbyers. Mm -hmm. That's it. And, the, and those are very few people, if you look at the masses of people that they're supposed to represent, those are very few people that they come in contact with. And they take all their information and they deal with just those those people. Mm -hmm. And we all know mostly any topic of discussion can be made to fit numbers. Right. You, can, you can drum up numbers to make any topic of discussion fit your point of view. Mm -hmm. So... The politicians, what I was listening to last night, was the same thing. They just answered the same, in the same ideology as they view the regular people. We don't care. 
I'll give you my answer and you'll and you'll like it. Right. You know. Well, that's why I'm, I'm kind of curious to see how the Democrat uh, debate is going to go. I am in a little bit of a tizzy with the Democratic Party right about now. And let me first say I, I am a Democrat and I, and I have nothing to do with the Republicans or the Independents, but I'm in a tizzy with the Democratic Party right about now because they are, for the most part, letting everything run amok. Uh, Everything that's going on, there's the, the, there is no the problems that are hand all of the all, all of the racial divide that's going on around the country, especially with the, you know last year being in, in as much turmoil as it was with the uh, the St. Louis killing, the New York killing, and all of these things that took place. None of these guys took. None, none of them. Nobody stepped up to say that anything was wrong. Uh, it's playing, uh, it's it was playing. all I he was giving a political correct answer. <laughs> it was all the whole thing was. Let's wait and see how the judicial system. Mm-hmm. Let's wait and see and let the judicial uh, system run its course. Right. right. The problem with that being is, we are the judicial system. Until we start. Going down and sitting on these court. When you get your people, when you get your little notice of jury selection, you need to go. Because nothing is going to change if you don't. People look at them, throw them in the trash, they don't go down. You need to start learning who the judges are. Right? This, oh, this, this vast, overwhelming, lopsided number of incarcerations to minorities as opposed to the other folks. It's there for you plain and plain to see. The thing that how they killed this young boy, this young man in Baltimore last year. Broke his back. He died he died suffering. But yet still they're saying that, you know, there was something, you know, that was going on. He was throwing himself around in the back of the truck. So they 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 gave his family a large settlement. But they said the settlement is not to say that the police officers were or were not guilty. We're just going to settle this out of court. And here's so it's that. just so it's just subject to our interpretation. <laughs> meaning the people out here, we're supposed to just view them as okay. They didn't do anything wrong, but something something happened. Yeah, exactly. Right. So you just to, okay. Like nine point five. Yeah, nine point five million. So. My question is: So, to all these people out here that that had that have had this certain similar problem that you've listened to, you know, hopefully it's never happened to your family. I, God, I could I could not wish that on a worse enemy. But at the same time, you're in police custody. You die. Is it safe to assume that everyone in police custody that dies commits suicide? I'm just saying. They, I, I mean, they said this guy committed suicide. He killed himself by throwing himself around in the back of a police van. The guy Eric Garner in in New York. Yeah. He's telling them he can't breathe, and he's standing. They don't care that the girl Sandra Bland, right? Right. Just another one. Well, now they're saying, now they're saying, oh, it wasn't suicide. Well, we knew that from the beginning. Well, we know it's not yeah. suicide, so he had to be murdered. Exactly. They won't say murder. They're just saying it wasn't he died suicide. Of his own, or they're saying that he died of his of natural causes? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. And there was another young man, I can't I recall his name. Um, he was complaining of stomach pains while in police custody. So they had the ambulance come in and look at him. And they said, okay, well, he needs to be taken to the hospital ASAP. So the sergeant, I believe it was the sergeant, I, excuse me if I misspoke, but I believe the sergeant said, well, you know what? No, nothing's wrong with him. They put him back up cell. And then uh, he was found there unconscious. So they called the ambulance back, took him to the hospital where uh, the police, they assumed he died. So they put a story out saying he committed suicide, but he's, he's in a coma. But they're saying he committed suicide. They didn't know he was in a coma. But he's actually still here. He's still here. So that goes to show 
Wow. I have to get that. I'm going to try to figure that. I'm going to find that name. Open that up. Yeah, too. he's still here. Yeah, see, the first thing they do is they, they, oh, they committed suicide because they want everything turned away from them like they did no wrong. Yeah. You know what I mean? But all in all, you did something. You know what I mean? Everybody going to jail is not going to just commit suicide, especially if you're only there for, you know you're only, only going to be there for four minutes. He was there for tickets. Like, why would you kill, kill myself for tickets? Like with Sandra Bland, why is she going to kill herself when she just went for an interview for a job and had everything going in her favor? Like, really? I believe she was targeted. Yeah, I, I believe so. she was targeted. Yeah, I do because she I spoke it. on police brutality mm -hmm. frequently. Yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah, she, all yeah. of a sudden, you know, she always received oh, yeah, different yeah. police telling her from here to there. She would tell. She told certain family members, you know, I think the cops are following. You know, but she didn't want to seem as if she was just being paranoid. And then that day, um, I believe she failed to use a, a paternal signal. And that gave him the go to pull her over. So, yeah, but now they're saying, oh, it wasn't, uh, it just wasn't suicide, but we can't say what it was. Okay, so but we can walk into a, 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 a church and shoot up nine people, including the senator oh. and the reverend, and he can get a cheeseburger and fries on the way to the end because, you know, that is just look. Yeah, you and know. With a on. Mm -hmm. You know, so when, there would be no undue harm come to him, as, and right. especially because we need to let the judicial system take its course. Right. But they are not only... Y'all ready? <laughs> now, people, but a lot of business, man. Nine families and a host of other people that are just I'm bad. Their lives Technical the difficulties, but we're back. I guess I'll try that. One of them, I guess. Which one? I'm going to take the mic. All right, we come back. You can introduce. And you, of course, you want to do this. <laughs> and this is me, me, not simply me, me. Just one thing. Oh, you gave me two minutes. <laughs> A long technical commercial break. Technical difficulties. Big time. But we were having some interesting conversations with you, Stream, while um, we were handling what we needed to handle. We were talking about a few things. Uh, we really should be a part of you, Stream, that we had an interesting conversation. But my other guest is here. <laughs> Another <laughs> simply, and this is simply me. What's up? Hey. Hey. It ain't authentic now because y'all didn't talk for like the past 20 minutes. So yeah, y'all done got everything out. So if you want to see anything behind the scenes, uh, make sure you go to bluestream.com and watch their conversation. So Very what's interesting. Up? <laughs> so like you said, what's up? Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Let me ask you, how did you come up with the name Simple? Well, yeah, I believe in originality, so I believe everyone should be original. Here we go. <laughs> so, <laughs> so just uh, being original. Um, and I just came up with. I was thinking of different names for my Facebook name because I didn't want to put my name on there. So I was trying to think, you know, well, why don't I put a fake name on there? So what should I go with? So I said, well, I can only be simply me. I can't be anyone else. And I said, you know what? I like that. So, okay. Change it. A little silly, but it works. <laughs> 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 you got too many simples. We got to change it. Are we going to work on that? Call us. Call us right now. And let us know. Yeah, call us. Call us. How about that? Should we, who should we keep them simply? Simply D, simply me, or simply Monica? Call and call him and, and give us a vote and let us know and i might be in trouble <laughs> oh congratulations too she, i might uh, be getting a phone call yeah she just became another uh, i don't know how does that work you already a grandmother Grandmother for again. the second time. For the second, I think it's the second time. Congratulations to Sister Monica. Congratulations. Her daughter just had, I don't know, I haven't been on social media. I don't know if she just had a baby. Okay. Okay. Congrats, it's a new life. Congrats from mm -hmm. Sador, open conversation to Sister Monica um, coming up. Grandparent again. 
oh, I hate when the engineer look at me. That means there's some problems. Go ahead. Like, what's that? Again? I don't know. We're very sick. But I hear us, so we on the head. Go ahead. All right, cool. Anyway, simply D's dumb dumb moment for this week is backtracking and trying to get over. So I've been burned a few times by the staff that I work with, telling me things, saying that they never said it, this or that. So I got smart and started doing a group text, which included my boss. That way I'm covered. So I texted this guy at work the other day and said, give me your work schedule, what you can work, because a lot of us work more than one job. Dum Dum text me back the days that he can work with the date. So this morning I'm sitting at work waiting for Dum Dum to come in. It's 8 o'clock. And I mind you, I have to be out on time because I have to leave Center City, get to the Northeast, take my daughter to school, get back to Center City, and go to my other job by 10 o'clock. Okay? So 8.15, Dum Dum still ain't there. So I start calling and texting him, no answer. He calls me back at 8.31, what's up? I'm like, what's up? You're supposed to be here at 8 o'clock. Oh, no. I told you I was coming in on Monday. He said, nope. You told me in a text message that you could work 8 to 12 on the 17th. No, I didn't. I said, dude, I'm looking at the text message. Want me to send it to you? <laughs> oh, you got that text message? Uh, yeah, dumb dumb. <laughs> well, I guess I'm on my way in. Yo, don't try to get over on someone is always two steps ahead. Not a good look, because I'm not that dumb dumb. That's my dumb dumb moment for the week. Word of advice. <laughs> Technology nowadays is a lot that you can't do and get away with. And, and just for GP, let me show you. Because some some individuals just don't get it yet. No, they don't. Like when uh when they look, look he ready. <laughs> Kev set up. Like, hey Kev, what you got? <laughs> what you got? Individuals. Right. Oh no, I'm just I'm, I'm I'm just really shocked that <laughs> somebody twenty fifteen Monday the fourteenth four p.m. Thursday the seventeenth and noon. Eight to nine. Yeah, eight to yeah. nine. But he, he wants to wait to me. He didn't send me the text. That's when you, that's when you screenshot it. Yeah. Text it back. Right. Who's the dumb dumb? Uh, yeah, come on. <laughs> Nowadays it's rough, man. The stuff that we used to pull, we can't pull no more with technology. Exactly. Well, like he forgot he sent me a whole text. Lies, lies, mm -hmm. denial. Get caught up. Well. After, I guess we're trying to recoup from this uh, technical breakdown that we just had. Um, the time is now 7 p.m. and the vine is over there shaking his head like he don't know what's going on. So I'm hoping that we're on the air. So let me know that we're on the air. Give us a call 267 3685 3228. And oh, we'll chime in. Yeah, let's call some time. There you go. <laughs> Let's no, see who can and you call better us. answer your phone if I call you too. Mm, we gonna call. Last week we called uh, Phoenix out the clear blue because now since you know that ought to be a good that ought to be a good thing for future shows. Oh yeah, definitely random because calls. people act like they're scared to call, but they want to text us and inbox random and, calls and say you know what they want to say. So now, now of course, due to privacy us. issues, we can't put your name on the air. No, we just but. Call you. We will tell you. <laughs> 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 let you answer the phone tonight. I might be somebody to tell you off. <laughs> you back there messing up the thing. <laughs> They're like, look. Is the caller there? No. They hung up? Uh -huh. You got to call back, caller. What's that, the code? All right. Let me find someone. Let's talk about the news while Simply D looks for somebody to call. Right, we were talking about the boy who took, made the clock who took the clock to school while we were having to. He did. The refreshing number? Say again. 14 year old kid made a clock, science clock, took it to school to show it to the teacher because he was proud of it. She or he got so paranoid they called the authorities, had the kid arrested and taken out of the school in handcuffs. I'm pretty sure when they came and looked at the clock, they could see it wasn't a bomb. Oh, that's what they thought it was? Mm -hmm. Where was this at? 
Wow. A bomb. You see, his name was, I forget what his name, his actual name was, but it was Hadid. From the Middle East. Yeah. A Middle Eastern name. Okay. And that's why. Yeah. So you know that's going to be one of our shows now. Um, I think I put something up about that. This guy had braids. I put in open conversation. Okay. He had braids. And he was on Oprah, as a matter of fact. Oh, yeah, you yeah, see yeah, that? yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that. And the lady called him and said, if I saw you out in the street, I would be scared. Uh, uh-huh. You saw that post? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he broke it down. The way he broke it down, I got my dictionary to look up some of the words that he was saying. Because mm-hmm. I understand. That's how intelligent his brother was. Right. So, and then uh, <laughs> he was sitting next to, was there two other? I think yeah, it was two other people, wasn't it? Yeah, two other blacks. But she picked him out because of braids. And I say that. Because it's funny how people judge because of the way you look. Mm-hmm. But most of the billionaires wear bummy sneaks, holy jeans, like Bill Gates. Mm-hmm. If you see them on the street, you wouldn't think that they were billions. Look at Donald Trump. He a bum. <laughs> <laughs> He's a, almost a billionaire. Because there's an old saying that I got. Because nonfiction is actually stranger than fiction. Mm. Something that's true, yeah. it actually blows the mind a whole lot more than uh, make believe. True. You can make up the stories about, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is, you tell somebody, yeah, like the guy out in Ohio that had those women in his house for 20 something years or 12 years, mm-hmm. however many years it was. And nobody knew, but when the story broke, the whole country was like, I can't believe that. Yeah. Hello? So you're on the radio. Hello? You're on the radio. You will be exposed. (laughs) Mom. Oh, that's mom? Yeah, let's see your answer. Hello? She knew you called from the radio. She hung up on (laughs) (laughs) me. She's like, you ain't playing me. (laughs) But. (laughs) <laughs> she said you're not gonna play me. But uh yeah, it, it's unfortunate that those type of things go on in, in this day and age, it's twenty fifteen. Yeah. It's just like the woman out in Pittsburgh when, when they signed Michael Vick to a contract. She puts up a sign that says That's your call and got the phone cut off. <laughs> The phone needs to be cut off by um, 8 a.m. What happened? Well, she put up a sign that said that she could forgive Ben Roethlisberger, but she would never be able to forgive Michael Vick. Yeah, now, how does that how, work? Yeah. If you are accused of raping women, so she never got sent to jail for I, I know because they got paid off. Exactly. And I don't think Pittsburgh's still a fan. That's my squad. I understand okay. that. But so we're talking we're talking outside as the SPN would say, outside the lines. <laughs> yeah. You know, you're talking about somebody that allegedly it ain't, raped, it ain't allegedly. Okay. There was no evidence to convict him. Oh yeah, there's three witnesses. That went to trial. I, yeah, well. But well, see what they you, did with it, Michael it's, Vick. It's almost like you value the life of a dog over the life of three individual men. That's sad. It's very Some sad people that's what we've come do. to. Yeah. yeah, I know this. Some and it's very do. sad that that's what we are. Mm-hmm. Very sad. Um, I have no love animals. I like people. <laughs> Notice the distinction. Notice the distinction in the two four-letter words. <laughs> yeah, people have a tendency to make your thoughts go a little left or a lot right. Uh, it's not cool. No, it wasn't, and that just speaks volumes for society and where we are as a society. It's color-driven. 
And for people who don't want to, who feel as though it's not, this isn't a dream color of world. It's real. For all the things that do not add up, a lot of times you can go back to one person's perception of another just because of their skin color. Don't even know the name. Let me ask you a quick question. Go ahead. How does we out? Yeah, go ahead, keep going. You stream the camera. Okay. How does uh, America view Dwight Eisenhower now? Knowing that his mom was mixed. Oh, I didn't hear the story yet. Oh, yeah. They just found out that his mom and a couple other presidents are from mixed descent. Really? Yeah. So they've been keeping on the high side? Oh, yeah. Oh, of course. For I quite some it. time. Yeah. Because I but haven't heard this one. To listen to the White Eyes now. I mean, listen to the followers of the White Eyes now, the Republican Party and everything else, the four star, five, four or five star general, whatever he was. And, Mm -hmm. Military. Uh, one of the greatest people ever walked the earth. But now he finds out that his mom was half and half. Half and half. Who else? Uh, I'm thinking there is a. Uh, I didn't hear everybody's name attached to that, but you can Google it. I'm well, quite oh, sure. I, I'm definitely going to Google that. You can Google it. I'm oh, quite yeah. sure. But I like to know how people feel about that. All right, let's face facts. They've already made uh, the story of Thomas Jefferson public knowledge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm. And he was something else. Mm. You know, but at the same time, he was messing with somebody that was three fourths of a human being. So to speak, at, at, according to them, right. You know, a black woman was three quarters yeah. of a human being. Or was she less than that? Because she was supposed to be less than a black man at that time. Yeah, how about that? You know, so. Let's hear it for time. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Getting those numbers up there. All right, Tom Jefferson. Way to go. <laughs> wow. You know. This is definitely a show that we can do. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I'm over here working, people. Trust me, I'm trying to. Can you back up? No, we didn't have, but we still recording, so. Oh, so that's okay. good. I mean, this is a new stream show today. <laughs> okay, so let's hear out there. And Chris on court you stream. stream. What's, what's our call so they can connect with us until we get back on radio? Where, where we at? Where are call letters? Uh, what's 267, it? right on top. 267-368-5328. There you go. Did y'all hear that out there? You stream? 267-368-5328. Call us. If you want to chime in on what we're talking about, you have a comment, call in. Let's talk about it. Yeah, we got some interesting topics this evening. There may be something that you really want to get off your chest, and we're here to let you beat it. Let's go. <laughs> what about well, the, uh, what we were talking about earlier with the Pope coming in and everything shutting down? It's still a lot of traffic out there now. So you can imagine how it would be over the weekend. Mm -hmm. Now, my thing is, I'm not for the Pope, and I'm not against the Pope, and that's what it is. However, where is all of this money coming from? And we have all these schools shut down all around town, but all of a sudden, here comes the Pope. We got money to we fix have money streets. To fix streets. Put up lights. Put lights oh, they're out there, the they're out there uh, polishing up the lights. Yeah. Which I honestly think that's a distraction and an accident waiting. Well, my thing is, like the hotel that I worked at, it's a brand new hotel. I've only been there for two years. It's in the city. Okay. And it had some dark spots or dark, dark areas around the hotel, which they could have fixed and put up lights when they built the hotel. Now the Pope is coming. We got new lights. Oh, of course. Lights all around. Everything is lit up. Wow. Do you know what I mean? Well, 
this, I'm quite sure they're getting their little part of the stimulus package. Yeah. They just kicked out. <laughs> people remember that word. Remember those two words, people. Stimulus package. And for those who don't think that uh, hierarchy has its place, the Divine Lorraine Hotel at Ridge Avenue and Broad Street what in North Philadelphia has just got whatever money or funding to be totally rehabbed. Wow. I drove by there the other day, let's say yesterday, mm -hmm. and it was a line of people. And it, I has just been, it has just been approved. They got money to redo the entire structure. So what would people, what would they get lined for? Uh, probably just to take pictures of the inside because they're turning them into luxury condos. Oh, okay. For people who've been around here a long time ago, it used to be Center City Cadillac. It was right. right to that door. Across hey, the street. Yeah. yeah, you listening uh, to the radio show? No, you're not Oh, okay. All right. That's what I was going to ask you. It's really it. So, like, it's, it's a new stream show. All the money, all the monies that are a, yeah, we have being tough, poured into the city of Philadelphia. The Philadelphia public school system is still okay. in shambles. All right. The funding for the Philadelphia public school system, regardless of See, it's nothing, not even music. Yeah, no. Regardless of where it's coming from, it's not generating anything as far as benefits or being beneficial to the students of this city that attend these schools. This is an out and out travesty. Yeah. I am a product of the Philadelphia public school system. I am proud to say that I am. Uh, I can hold a conversation with just about anybody anywhere right. on just about any given topic of discussion. It really bothers me that the channels and the avenues that are available to the children that go to these schools are being misappropriated. Uh, that the money is being that could be that could go to these schools to help these young people are being stolen mm -hmm. by our own elected officials. Yeah. And the fact that they're made to suffer because somebody else doesn't have doesn't have a child here. If people are so adamant about the public school system and its level of its curriculum that's being taught nowadays, they always holler about going to a charter school or a private school. Well, a lot of people just move outside of the city because the taxes are a little bit different. And they send their children to public school systems that are better than the private schools within the city of Philadelphia. Yeah. So the public school system is not something that's a dumping ground. It shouldn't be considered that. What should be considered is the level of these quote unquote civic leaders that refuse to do anything for our children. Maybe their children don't go to Philadelphia public schools. Hey, of course they don't. You know they don't. They they're in a private school or a charter school, and uh, meanwhile they they're doing what they're doing. They build. They're closing down everything, but they're building more prisons. Oh yeah. So it's like they're just sitting like kids up for prisons. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> prison is big business now. Yeah, okay. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It always was and That's always will be. Yeah, and now it's to the extent where I, I read something a couple months ago where the prisons were suing the state because the state wasn't fulfilling their obligation and providing them with enough prisons. Wow. Yeah, go figure. They suing the state because <laughs> they didn't have enough prisoners from the state. Are they saying they didn't have enough? Are they saying they didn't they didn't have a large enough head count, or are they saying that they didn't have a large enough head count of the people that they could depend on being there? They didn't have a large enough head count that they were promised. 
Like, promised? Well, I'm just telling you what this I is from Pennsylvania. Yeah, I'm just telling you what I read. And I, it, it blew me away. Because nine times out of ten, the promissory note that was guaranteed to them <laughs> that came from that came from probably some politicians or whomever within the city con within the city uh boundaries yeah. about who they were gonna lock up and yeah. when they were gonna lock them up and what they were gonna take. Oh, we, oh, we can guarantee you these numbers. We can guarantee these yeah. now a lot of them a lot of uh prisoners from what I'm understanding, a lot of these a lot of these crimes are going to the federal level. No longer the state level. Oh, so yeah. federal jurisdiction is taking over now. So maybe that's part of why the reason why they're not getting the head count that they're looking for. Maybe so, because they've been so shady and, and, and grabbing you and I off the street and locking us up. You know what I mean? It's just for a head count. So maybe that's why. A head count. The state is suing. Ha! Who broke that news? No, the prison was suing the state. The prison's system. Yeah. Who was run by who? <laughs> Government. I mean, somebody has to, somebody well, has to have some, a, some they have to be overseen by somebody. Some of them are ran by individuals, like, mm -hmm. they put them like Michael Jordan has uh, one or two. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They're Michael right Jordan has one or two what? Prisons. Prisons. He's a major investor. Okay. Let me ask you a question. <laughs> he owns them or he's investing? Either way, it doesn't make any sense he's to me. He's invested right? into two. He's invested into two. At least two. Okay. Those same guys that are running out spending three, four hundred dollars on the stories. <laughs> <laughs> They funded their, they funded their own little free exactly. house in the car. Exactly. <laughs> Pretty much. Because mm -hmm. he getting you both ways. He, he getting you for for going out there knocking somebody over the head to get his sneaks. Yeah. And then uh, he's getting you because you knocked the person over the head. So he getting paid off you twice. Mm -hmm. And you, you you knocked somebody over the head to go get his sneaks and spit the what are they, 300 or whatever? I have no idea. I have no idea. I'm $240 range, yeah. I guess, somewhere in there. And then when you get caught and go to jail, now you gotta, he's getting money off of, off the head count. Well, the so. crime, the criminal ought to be asking for something. This money's back, because evidently they didn't make him fly far far enough or run fast enough. Because he got caught in his Jordan. Huh? Yeah. Well, I, I, I will say this, and, and I'm not a fan. Uh, I'm not a fan of either one. But I, I, I kind of dig what LeBron is doing as far as mm -hmm. investing in his community, yeah. mm -hmm. allowing and paying for people to go to school, mm -hmm. not just kids, but also the parents of kids if they want to go. Mm -hmm. You know, investing money that he's making out of his pocket. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I, I'm, just, I'm just saying, I don't, I don't see nobody else doing that. That's all to LeBron. And I'm not a fan of, of him or, or Jordan, never was. Mm -hmm. My my greatest basketball player has been always Charles Barkley, so <laughs> I'm not a fan. But I I gotta dig what he's doing. Um, well, that's <laughs> at least he's giving back something. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just think it's time. For, I, I I just think it's time for a whole lot of uh, people. Just talk to the cameras. They're watching. It's, it's time for a lot of people to do what? So you saying it's time for people to do what? I think it's time for our communities to actually stand up and get involved with these kids. I'm sorry. It's easier to teach a child than it is to repair a grown adult. Uh, for some reason or another. You know, everybody want to turn their back on. I'm on the other side of 50. So, I can tell you I come from an era that a whole lot of people, we were raised a whole lot differently. And I understand that uh, technology has played a part in the way that things are done nowadays. You know, and I think that's basically because a camera can see you with everything that you do. So for all these crooks and criminals out there getting caught on tape, you're dumb. That ought to be one of your subjects. Yeah, that, that ought to be one That's of the subject matter. That's a dumb, dumb moment. You know. Yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah, because there was a whole lot more completed with a whole lot less technology. 
as far as the community was concerned, as far as the direction that we went in, especially in the black community. That's all I can speak for because that's where I live. That this, this has absolutely nothing to do with the white community or the Asian community or any other. So keep listening and, and keep coming in with the questions and give me some feedback because I'm always interested in learning more about different cultures. But I'm speaking primarily on the black community right now, where I come from. Uh, basically, it was a village that raised the child. True. That's basically what it was. It was a village. Whether you want to subscribe to it and believe it or not, you know, I hear so many people, especially in our community, I hear so many people talk about, you know, well, back in the day, you know, they, they we got raised by our moms and grandmoms. Well, I don't know what back in the day they talking about, but if it wasn't from uh, 1945 on down to 1978, 79, mm -hmm. I don't know what community they talking about. Right. Because these new wage mommies that came up, some of them took he to the way that their mothers did things a lot of them did yeah a lot of them did right now whether that because what there's so many different demographics that can go and get that can you can stack up against this about men being in prison the black male in prison the black male being emasculated the female taking control of the head of the household and everything you got to be the wage earner as well as that you take you put all those numbers throw them in a, in a bed come up you come up with any answer you want but the primary sole objective back then was family first and family last. And that meant it spread throughout the whole community. It didn't mean anything about a house on the hill, what you're driving, what you're wearing, because everybody wore the same thing. And everybody lived in the same area. And everybody went to the same, they, they, their moms and pop worked together. You went to the same schools, you did every, everything was together. Along comes integration in 1968, and boom, about 20 years later, in 1988, things went bananas. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we can look at it. We don't invest in the children the way we used to. Sure. We can't. We we don't do that. We do everything else. But that. Yeah, and, and investing is not just money. Investing is quality time that you spend with a child. You know what I mean? I, I can't help but think how many children come home and, you know, end up, if they do their homework, do their homework alone. Mm -hmm. uh, sitting at the table eating alone. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because the parent is either, if, if it's a two parent home or one parent home, they're either at work or just came home from working too tired to do anything but go to bed. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So the child is left to fend for themselves. Yeah. So, you know, where, where's the family, you know, unit coming together? There the is family dynamic, dynamic where we ate dinner together I every night. Like I said, and what happened to sitting down at the table when I was growing up? We had to turn the TV off. Dinner was always around the same time. We were told to turn the TV off. Mm -hmm. And we all had to sit down and tell each other about, you know, how our day went. Right. We have a good day. We have a bad day. And we used to pass the salad and pass the bread, and now it's like order pizza and everyone's on their phone. Right. I'm on the phone, yeah. dad on the laptop, the kids on their tablet, you know, the little baby running around. And it's just like, where, where, where is the disconnect? Where did the disconnect come in? Right. I think the disconnect came in when everybody started blaming technology for their problems. Yeah. Right? You, you, listen, technology is only, is only an avenue. Mm -hmm. To go down and escape. Yeah. That's it because without people pushing technology, it doesn't work. Exactly. Right. You know what I mean? Th yeah. Things won't work unless you press a key. Yeah. Right. That's weird. You just stay on here. I'm going to talk on here. I'm going to ask questions to make sure you get It's part of it, you know. It's not a 100% fail, but, it, you know, we get back to where we get back to. Um, but truthfully speaking, it, it we as people, not as a people, but we as people, as human beings, we look for the easy way. Right. Yeah. What's more, we won't say easy. Best. What's convenient? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's convenient for you, for me, at that particular point in time? Mm -hmm. You know. 
not, it, I can't say I'm I'm not a, a lady, so I can't say. But there's a whole there's a whole thing where, where you say cook and and you know have dinner and all the rest of that. That doesn't happen. The dynamic of a woman fixing food for the family doesn't happen. Well, it's and, not and, not as well, much as it used to be. It's not it's not, not, it's not consistent because now you have. I'll cook the Sunday dinner, but after that, that's it. That's Y'all on your own for the rest of the week. Yeah, not with every household. With the majority, and, and most of the time, it's within the single parent home. Because you have these mothers that have to get up early, go to work. You know, you come home, then you have the children. You have children screaming. You're doing the homework with the kids, and yeah. you're trying to cook. You're drained. So there, now, me, I used to cook almost every day. Oh, I cut that down. I'm mm. this every other day. But they still, you know, eat good, but... I'm not at this so every day because you know I'm helping the children with their homework, we're preparing for the next yeah. day. I try to set all of the clothing out for the week and the dinner yeah. out for the week because I try yeah. on Sunday. I try to make sure because I know I'm gonna be tired. Mm -hmm. So I try to set myself up for some ease through the week. Because you have one child running down, eat this, another child eating that, and somebody towards someone's homework. So you get so stressed because you're living this every single day. Mm -hmm. But this is what you set yourself up for. So right. this is what you're gonna have to do. Mm -hmm. So as far and then you have some women that are just outright lazy. Yeah. They just don't want to cook. You know? Hello. Yeah. I'm just going to call a spade a spade. Yeah. You know? Because there are some that feel as though they got a job, and that's that. Oh, I'm just independent now. Yeah, so you know, you know. But <laughs> the house doesn't stop functioning because no. you got to eat the fire. Uh -uh. Well done. And and and, and she, like she says, there's some. You know, I know. Uh, uh, with the young lady that I'm seeing, Alicia, she makes a point of coming home. She cooks for her daughter, or if both daughters are there, um, throughout the week. You know what I mean? And let's say if I come home, or if I'm if I go over to the house and I get there at ten o'clock at night, it's like, are you hungry? And mm -hmm. she will get up and cook mm -hmm. with no problems. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Or vice versa, like Sunday I cook. You know what I mean? So. It's like we might take turns, but she's, she grew up where you take care of your family, and uh -huh. she gets to go to work every single day. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? See, I, I also think that the uh, that the dynamic of the family has changed because the male attitude changed with the times, and it didn't change for the better. Because let me explain this. A lot of people, a lot of times I hear this thing about women are so strong and independent. It's not that. And I want all y'all to listen to this. A lot of times, it's men are so weak and dependent. Hmm. Interesting. They're weak and they're dependent because we raise our boys, but we love our sons. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And they get this, this feeling of entitlement mm -hmm. and this, this inability to adapt. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Because as time goes on, and as technology increases and improves, you yourself as a human have to be able to adapt. Mm -hmm. This is 2015. This is not 1975. This is not 1985. This is not 1995. And so all these excuses about where we are and what we and, and what we failed to accomplish because it let a whole lot of us obtain. We don't achieve. Well, right. I, I, I can agree with you because I know I, I once dated a female who, you know, she did some things that just blew me away. Like one day we were all, we had two sons. We were having dinner and we sitting at the dinner table. So we blessed the food and, you know, I started eating. She starts eating. And I'm looking at her two sons, real sitting there. And I'm like, okay, what's going on? Because this is a nice meal. Why are you just sitting there and not eating? And if she says, oh, and gets up and starts cutting their meat, and I'm looking at her like, to myself, like, are you are you kidding me right now? Wow. Are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. And I mean, we're talking like 14, 12 years old. Oh, no, son. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, are you kidding me? Wow. I got stories I can tell you about my second marriage didn't work. work. Yeah, a lot of the issues with with some men are because of not all, some, no, 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 no
Um, and it's not because they grew up in a single parent home. You know, no. and most of the time it's not even because her and her father wasn't involved. Even though a woman can't raise a man to be a man, she can raise her, him. She can raise, she can him, raise him, to him to be a respectable person. There you go. There you go. But a lot of the issues are because some of these mothers over nurture these boys, and they don't take the pacifier out even when they're in their thirties. It's like okay, right. there's nothing wrong with a mother loving her son or a son loving his mother. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's a di different type of mama's voice. You mm -hmm. may have a mama's boy who just loves his mom, will make sure she take her trash is taken out, help her cook, you know, clean. That's nothing wrong with that. But then you have this mama boy who always need mommy to co-sign everything, even in his relationship. You know, and then if your girlfriend doesn't say what mommy says, it's like, oh, she's crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and then there you have the divide. And then there you have where... The certain women won't like the mom because the mom is always in their business or the son always involved in the mom in their business. And then there you have the divide. See, this is something I wanted to speak about. I guess I'm going to save a little bit of it before, uh, for the, the yeah, topic. Yeah, yeah, for, yeah. for the, um, I'm going to save some of that. I'm going to save some of that for the topic. However, you know, a lot of the, the issues we have now are because a lot of men don't know how to be a man and they're afraid to go to an older man and say, hey, you know what? Somewhere along the line, um, I messed up somewhere, or I need some help, or I don't know. Just openly say, I don't know how to be a man. That's pride. It's pride. It's pride. It's pride. Pride, it's pride. It's pride. It's pride. It's pride. pride yeah. has actually, <laughs> it has gotten away. It has gotten in the way of a whole lot of people's progress. Yeah. But their potential to be a better person than they actually are mm -hmm. has been stunted by the word pride mm -hmm. and their actual definition and how they go about use of the word pride. Mm -hmm. um, there is just a little bit, and I'm in, I'm in total agreement with you when you say that there are a lot of mothers that over nurture. Yeah. Uh, There's nothing wrong young. with the mother of you know loving her child, even if the son goes to his mother for advice. Mm -hmm. He just needs to know when and where to invite his mother in. What situations and circumstances to invite the mother in. And 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 to a and, and to a degree, when he asks his mother for that type of advice, she right. needs to be able to tell him, "Boy, what? Like, that's not nothing that another woman wants to. Eat. That's not nothing yeah. that you should be coming to me with. Yeah. You need to be discussing that with her. I can give you a suggestion, but." At that particular point, I don't need to know no more about it. Yeah. Because I remember my mother telling me, <laughs> I ain't got nothing to do with it. You, 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 adult, you and your own uh -huh. relationships. I don't have nothing to do with anything that you do. Don't uh -huh. come in here. Don't talk about I was old mom's house. Don't say, I don't know nothing. All I know is my grandkids. I don't know nothing about what you do and what you don't do. <laughs> uh -huh. And she meant it. Yeah. You can see, like I said, I come from an era where. The, the, the parenthood was what it was. The parenthood. Yeah. Right? And mom would tell me, you go out there and get in trouble, if it ain't self-defense, don't call me. Mm -hmm. Because you know we did something to get in trouble. No, I'm not putting nothing on commissary. No, I'm not <laughs> putting up my house for a lawyer, no, getting a second mortgage. No, I'm not coming to see you. No, I'm not doing any of that. Mm -hmm. Whoever you was running with, you better hope they got somebody uh -huh. to help you out because Evan Carter Johnson ain't helping out nobody. <laughs> she said a name like that. that means you know what I mean? We gave him three words. It was like, look, ECJ speak. That, it, look, like he had button. Everybody listen. I, for one, understand the problems of being a youth and making mistakes mm -hmm. but what i don't understand is the problems of youth and making the same mistake mm -hmm. over and over and over it again didn't hurt and i don't mean and, and i don't mean uh okay you robbed you you, you you shot with this something out the market and you got caught mm -hmm. right i don't mean going back to the market and trying to boot something else what i'm saying is you know that was wrong so the next thing you do you go try and steal a car then you break into somebody's house. Mm -hmm. And next thing you know, you are like, like it, it, another thing for your dumb, dumb moments. Them two clowns that broke into that woman's house. And it, it's all on camera. Mm -hmm. 
They, I mean, face them off. They took nothing. Right. But they come, They got the guns in their hand. They pushed them in the house. The women fought back. Now, it would have been good if they had a camera inside showing the women whipping their behind. Right. You know what I mean? But then they came out doing this. Oh, right on the camera. Right on the camera. I say, see, see, you know, this, this is what I mean. Lack of education. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, 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 a lot of people want to base so much things on racism. A lot of this is classism. Yeah. You dummies just refuse to do anything you need to better yourselves as an individual. What's wrong with going to school? Right. What's wrong yeah, with getting yeah. some letters after you? Yeah. They got loans out there for you to go to school. Yeah. And get, what's wrong and with that? There, there are programs out there. There right. are programs and there are grants out there. Right. They're not going to make it as public. Public. No, they, you know, but if you do some research, all over. But if you go, you can go to the public library, library and it's free. And it's free. Say, hey, you know what? I want to sign up for a library card. Can you show me how to right. uh, find a book one on grant writing or, or the books that have grants? So it's money out there. Yeah, there is. You know, there, but no one wants to. Everyone wants it so fast. These days, everything right. is so fast. Like a microwave and they, dinner. They don't want the read exactly, and they they don't want to research. You know, they want you to help me show me how so I can help me go get this money mm -hmm. versus taking. I like to take the long walk so I can see more. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes it's okay to take a little shortcut to get to where you got to go, but sometimes it's better to take the long walk to look at the view there. So once you're there, you'll remember that walk. Okay, I've seen that, I've seen that, I've seen that, I've seen that. I have, well, there, there is a book that I, I recently, well, I found out about it last year. And uh, Dr. Hughes, the woman who actually runs the uh, Blood for Blood Bank, told me about it. There's a book in the library that she said is this massive book that can tell you every and any reason in every category in which you can get a grant to go to school. Oh, I'm interested. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a library it's, it's actually, just for, like you said, for the book on grants. The book, okay, because I've been, but I haven't seen the one. Okay, uh, yeah. she told maybe me it's at a, 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 a larger library than where I was at. Yeah, I'm definitely go down the Central Branch. Yeah, yeah, go down, go down. Yeah. I'm, I'm not from the area, so. But well, I know, you know where, where, where the Pope is going to be. Oh so no, not this thing. weekend. Not this weekend. Maybe mid October or something. If I try this weekend, I probably won't make it there until Wednesday. Make it mid October somewhere. Wait until he leaves. Yeah, you know, and then you'll be. I went to the plane land and he. But yeah, no. okay. that is that is an institute that is an institution and a facility that I'm just enamored with. Mm -hmm. All the information number one, the architecture number two, mm -hmm. the peace and quietness and, and, and the subtleness of everything that you can find mm -hmm. in there, the willingness of the people who, who work yeah. there that are willing to help you, yes. you know, and plus it's self-motivating. It's yeah. it, once you start reading, you know, hey, I'm a writer too. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's more and more. It's more and more advantageous for you to be in there the longer you're in there because mm -hmm. you're going to soak up information that you just mm -hmm. don't even know. Mm -hmm. You have no idea what's going on, how long things have been the way they are, and why they the way they are. And you know, and things that you can possibly do to better yourself, and, and it's just a wealth of knowledge. Yes, yeah. right. Um, but back to our original point, that knowledge that that knowledge is there. We just we made it go to go to the library. Oh yeah, we had to go to the library. Yeah. Everybody had to come on with a library card, mm -hmm. even in school. Right. In school, we had to go. There was a, a day and time set for to you to go, go to, to the library. library. A lot of schools don't even have libraries anymore. So we cut out all these programs, the libraries, you know, but when it comes down to, I'm going to bring back the book again. I'm sorry. You know, like, I don't know. We owe all this money. Oh, we forgot we had a couple hundred million um, stashed beneath the mattress. But all the schools are shut down. I don't know what's going on. Sorry. So you have children who have to take two and three buses just to get to school and then take two and three buses home because the school that used to be across the street from their home is now an abandoned building. Yeah. 
But your taxes That's are still right. going up. Oh, and you still have to pay pro- you still have to pay school taxes exactly. for buildings that are not being occupied. Yep. You have all that, these charter schools coming in. But <laughs> their budget but their budget is cut from the public schools financing. Hmm. Mm-hmm. The charter schools budget yeah. is cut from the public schools financing. And I would challenge anyone out there right now that is watching us on Ustream <laughs> to call in a type in and tell us that I'm wrong. <laughs> and come with some facts. Because we need to know. This is a learning institution as well as an informational program. <laughs> so therefore, we need to know just what exactly is the charter school budget and their referendum. And on that note, we're going to close out on you stream <laughs> so we can do some work behind the scenes to prepare for We'll be back on the radio to discuss the topic that we came here for. But because of technical difficulties, we are unable to do our regular routine. So we hope individuals that watch this show on YouTube, once it's posted, understand that this is hard work behind the scenes. You see me running back and forth on the phone. You see the team holding it down. While I was trying to help Mr. Devine over there deal with... Uh, I don't know the word that I can use. Technical difficulty. You know, something deeper than that. <laughs> Craziness. But uh, we're going to try to put something together so that way we can come back to you and do this show maybe the following Thursday, not next Thursday, but the following Thursday. If y'all would probably, you know, get back to me, let me know. Since I didn't book anything two weeks from now, but next week we have What is Islam? We're going to have uh, one of the emails from. The mass jet off of Ogans and Washington Lane um, here as a guest, which should be interesting. And that's uh, trying to think. Uh, the brother name is Abdul Alim of Mass Jid Allah, and we're going to discuss some things on Islam. Which last season we stayed away from um, religion and color and racism because we didn't walk that line but this season we really touched on everything it's going to be an open conversation on different topics that affects our daily lives yeah so on that note we do appreciate you for watching uh the Ustream version of open conversation i want to thank and apologize to both our guests mr kevin johnson and miss simply me one me me <laughs> and definitely look forward to them coming back on the show and Miss Dark Child should be here also, so the whole team will be here. And I want to thank our cameraman behind the scenes, Mr. Chris, for recording. So you will be able to see some of this stuff and footage on our TV part, Open Conversation, because it was recorded um, once Lil from Sedora Photography and Films edited everything out. And, um, of course, I'm open to invite Miss Simply Me to the next Women's Empowerment Circle. And you know Mr. Kevin Johnson will be at the Men's Empowerment Circle. He was at the last two. Believe that. Which you will be seeing the Men's Empowerment Circle 2 in the next couple of weeks because it's being edited, uh, which we shot. And you'll see us also at all the uh, sickle cell walks, cancer walks. You know how we do. All the walks, you see us out there with the cameras and doing what we do. So any last words to our new stream real anybody? I'd just like to take the opportunity to thank Open Conversation for inviting me in here. Um, this is a great show. We need to support this as much as we can, everywhere we can. This is positivity at its grassroots, and it's necessary for it to be out there because we need a voice, and that voice is you. That's, that's a nice crap. Remember that, man. We got to record that. You get that, you get that crap. Yeah, I got it. Remember that. No, I would like to uh, thank everyone for having me, and I look forward to uh, coming back as a guest. Definitely. We've had you on a couple of times. Yeah. Yeah. This is only, only the beginning. Only the so, beginning. Well, that, anything you got something to do no, before we um, go? You know, we enjoy you tuning in every Thursday, 6 to 8, right here on uh, Open Conversation, Shador, LLC, right? Mm-hmm. OC. Mm-hmm. 
the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. No, 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 like right now. No, no. Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> okay. With his face. Um. Yeah. yeah. What's no, 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 no. no. Oh, yeah. The Def Comedy Jam joint. Uh-huh. The original. Oh, oh my lord. Oh. No. Wait, oh. Uh, Russell Simmons? Yeah, Russell Simmons. Russell Simmons. Thanks for watching. Good night. That's how we're going to end it.